the drum! Eric Carr is the most beloved figure in all of history. Let's take a look at his drum solos. We're not going to rank every solo he ever did. That would be a really long video. Instead we're going to look at the drum solo for all 7 tours Eric did with KISS and rank those. I'm not going to rank them in terms of technical drumming difficulty because, number 1, I'm not a drummer and I really have no idea. And, secondly, it's Eric Carr, so these solos are all awesome. So instead, I'm going to rank them in terms of presentation and overall vibe of the solo. Make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be that kind of thing. <laughs> Let's do it. All kids rank. Random kids stuff. Vaguely put in order. There's nothing wrong with the drum solo from the Lick It Up tour, but I think it had the weakest presentation of all Eric's tours with KISS. They reused the tank drum riser from the previous tour and it's still a great solo from Eric. The only issue here is that because KISS had scaled down the pyro so much, the tank no longer blew shit up. It still looked cool with the smoke and the lights. But this time around the massive gun just showed a beam of light. When you're at a KISS show and you see a huge tank, it's a bit disappointing if it doesn't blow stuff up. The phased drum effect from Alive was still being used and it still sounded good. And, as you can tell, the crowd still really appreciated the solo. The drum solo for the Unmasked tour came in the traditional spot of the middle of God of Thunder, just as it had since 1976. This solo is cool, but it's very long at nearly 9 minutes long. To put that in context, they could have played the studio version of Let Me Go Rock and Roll four times during this solo. One thing I like about this solo is that he waits until near the end to do the double bass part. And that's when the pyro kicks in. It's almost like he's saying, I can do everything Peter used to do, but look what else I can do. Let's take a second to reflect on how cool it is that five months prior to this, this guy was repairing stoves. Now he's having tens of thousands of people chanting his name. The Crazy Nights tour was really scaled back in terms of effects, and the same was true for Eric's solo. It was pretty much just some lights that changed color. A 
and a smattering of pyro at some shows. The electronic drum pads from the Asylum Tour were back and were played in the same way. The one difference however was the addition of a new effect that played a guitar riff over which Eric would solo. Keyboardist Gary Corbett, who was hiding off stage for most of the tour, helped Eric sample Metallica riffs to create the sound. It was cool, but I think Eric would do a much better job on this on the next tour. Oh, and sometimes it didn't work. The animalized drum solo was short and sweet, coming in at less than 4 minutes in length. But it was high energy throughout. I like the way Eric started it off with the gong hit. Then there was no time wasted with Eric going right into the intense double bass part of the solo. There was some good crowd interaction as usual. One cool effect was having the lighting rig descend over Eric as he kicked into an up-tempo rock beat. By the end, it was floating over him like a UFO. And after an explosion, Kiss went into Young and Wasted with Eric singing, which was great. The Creatures of the Night drum solo was bonkers. The drum riser came out on a massive smoking tank, and the sound effects made it actually seem like a rolling tank. Near the end of the solo, the tank would turn from side to side and blow up the sound system on the ceiling. It was the perfect stage effect for Kiss's new hard-hitting drummer. And it transitioned into War Machine, which couldn't be more perfect.
Before we get to the top two, do you remember the time when Gene Simmons said that Eric had been kidnapped and held for ransom by some young female fans? So, so tell me about the, where are the other guys uh, hiding out or something? Are well, they, Paul, Paul uh, went to New Zealand to see a friend, and uh, Eric had a little too much to drink last night. <laughs> actually, Eric is being actually Eric is being uh, he's being held <laughs> ransom. Yeah. by two of the fans, two of our younger female fans. Being held ransom? Yeah. What's it going to cost you to get a bank? Well, yeah. we've got to find out when we get back to the hotel. Here's an exclusive <laughs> photo of Eric and his kidnappers. <laughs> Turns out that all they really wanted was for you to subscribe to All Kiss Ranked for more Kiss Rankings. Thanks. Back to the video. When people think of the Asylum era, usually the first thing that comes to mind was the garish costumes and Jean looking terrible. The tour itself featured very long solo breaks from all four members. As it had on the Animalized tour, the lighting rig descended over the drum kit again. There was a cool call and response part with the crowd featuring the massive KISS logo. This was followed by some impressive explosions. Then Eric teased the crowd about using the drum pads. In 1979, Peter used electronic effects in his drum solo and it sounded... What's the word I'm looking for? Awful. By 1985, they sounded great. This was a pretty revolutionary effect at the time. It got even cooler when Eric kicked into a hard driving beat and they put him only in strobe lights. This was followed by a truly terrifying wall of flames that lasted forever. This solo was the perfect example of the over-the-top, hair metal, 80s kiss. Eric's best solo was on the Hot in the Shade tour which was his final tour with KISS. Interestingly, at first this wasn't part of the show because KISS was trying to focus on songs rather than solos. Eric was furious about this and his solo was added back around the middle of the tour. Near the beginning the drum pads had this very interesting human sounding sample. It resulted in a cool choir effect that fit well with the Egyptian theme of the tour.
Then the double bass took over with Eric pounding like a maniac. At most shows, Eric would play over a sample of the Who's Who Are You while the lasers went off. This was his last tour, but this solo was a fitting swan song for the late, great Eric Carr.